Praise the Lord, everybody. How many is ready for Monday night of camp meeting? Come on, let's stand to our feet this evening. Come on, everybody, lift your hands. Come on, let's welcome the Holy Spirit. How many even feel in the Holy Spirit during this camp meeting? Come on. Come on, let's pray tonight. Show up bigger and better and greater. God, come on, somebody lift your hands and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. God, we thank you, God, for the manifestation of your spirit, God, through this camp meeting. God, we thank you for being able to feel you, God, in, in the presence around us. God, we pray tonight that it be bigger and better in your own way, that you speak to us, God, in a fresh way tonight, that we would leave change, God, that we would give all that we have, God, to you tonight to hear from you. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.
their hearts And they thought they would die But they failed to remember That the Master was nigh And He spoke the words And the winds all stood still And even the waters They obeyed Yeah. 
Thank you for meeting us here tonight, God. Thank you for meeting us in the sanctuary here tonight, Lord. You turn it into a holy gathering. Lord, your presence, Lord, turns it into a holy gathering. Hallelujah, Lord, I thank you, God. Lord, that you would gather with us. Lord, I ask you to touch your people tonight. Touch your people tonight. Listen, whatever you have need of in the presence of the Lord, your answer will be found. Your answer will be found. Do you believe that? Hallelujah. Well, let's just stand across the congregation. Reach out to your neighbor. And let's just pray one for another. God, I'm praying for my brothers, my sisters. Oh, God, meet them right where they're at tonight. Meet them right where they are tonight. Hallelujah. Meet them right where they are tonight. Lord, if they have a physical need, I'm asking you to heal them. If their mind is tormented, God, give them peace. If their heart is overcome with cares and anxieties, Lord, I'm asking you to just remove it away. Lord, that they'll have a calm. There'll be faith, not worry in their heart, Lord. Fear must go. Fear must go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, change us tonight. Change us tonight, God. Transform us from glory to glory. Lord, even by your image, into your very image, God. Help us to be more like you. More like you, God. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Man, it feels like revival around here. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Does anybody feel the Holy Spirit in this place? Man, I tell you what. God has, has chose to meet with us. This is an ordained time. I, you know what? I, God has had his hand in this from the very beginning. From the very beginning. And, and uh, you know, we always have camp meeting, but we've never come back a second month with it. But it just was on my heart to do so. And God is meeting us here. God is meeting us here praise god amen i'm thankful for what he has done already in our midst but he's not done he's not done amen it's a divine appointment and when you come with your heart set upon the lord he'll meet you there he will meet you there praise god thank you for being with us here tonight thank you for coming out to the house of the lord we welcome our visitors we're so glad to have you visiting with us tonight and we want you to just feel right at home and welcome among us and uh, we love the Lord, and uh, we love you, and we love each other. Praise God. That's about as simple as we can make it right there. Amen. And we are glad that you are with us. I'm glad to have Pastor Greg Atkins with us. Amen. And he will be with us tonight and tomorrow night. And uh, you're going to be blessed by his ministry. And he's been with us before, and I know many of you uh, remember him being with us. But it's probably been maybe three years or, or somewhere in that since he's been here. But the Lord laid him on my heart. The Lord laid him on my heart. Uh, matter of fact, when we was putting together these meetings, he was the, one of the first ones the Lord put on our heart to, to invite because I just believed that God had something for us. Amen. Amen. And so I'm glad that you're here tonight to be a part of that. We thank you for your giving. You know, the camp meeting is supported by your, by your giving. And uh, we give now by just dropping it in the containers there in the entryways. So as you come in, you can drop your tithe and offering, or at the end of service, as you go out, drop your tithe and offering into those things, and uh, we'll be a blessing to the man of God. And we'll go tonight, we're going again tomorrow night, so I hope you have it on your calendar, and uh, come out, invite somebody, and let's believe God for great and wonderful things, amen? What a wonderful testimonies that we've heard over the last month and a half or so, we've heard testimonies of healing. Yes of deliverance we've heard of people's backs being healed and delivered uh cancer and tumors and and healed amen amen i believe god's got more of that god's got more of that he is a healing god so you put your hope and your faith in him praise god we're going to worship with the praise team one more time and then pastor greg is going to come and bring the word It is 
Bless him tonight. Bless him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the victory tonight. Yeah. Come on, give a shout unto God in the house tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. You could be seated tonight. God bless you. Praise the Lord. He is the one that gives us the victory, right? Amen. I don't know about you, but when they started talking about the fire by night, I had a new picture. Dr. Brian talked a little bit about that fire in the wilderness, right? Amen. It wasn't just to give warmth and, and light to Israel. It was to keep the enemies away. I don't know about you, but if I seen a big fire that went all the way to the heavens in the middle of the camp, I'd probably stay away too. <laughs> Amen. He's the God who fights for us and gives us the victory. Praise the Lord. You're not defeated. Don't live defeated. Don't act defeated. Get rid of the defeated mindset, right? We're not victims. You're a victor. You're an overcomer through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So glad to have Pastor Greg Adkins with us here uh, once again uh, for our revival. He's from Enterprise, Alabama, and uh, got a wonderful church and and uh, doing the work of the Lord and just uh, spreading the gospel through his region. We thank God for his ministry. We thank God for the work that he is doing. And I'm very glad, I'm very excited to have him here with us tonight. So let's take a moment, let's open our hearts right now. Lord, we just open our hearts to the word of God. We open our ears, Lord, to hear what the Spirit will say to us tonight, God. Help us to be good ground, God, that will bring forth much fruit from the word that is delivered to us. We receive it tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want you to make him welcome tonight. Pastor Greg Adkins. Amen. What an honor and a privilege it is to get to be back here with you. Amen. Excited for what the Lord's going to do and feel the presence of the Lord. It's, it's always such a blessing as an evangelist. I always tell my church people this. I said, I not only want us to be able to bless, you know, when evangelists come and be able to bless them. I said, I want them to be able to preach easy. And I want them to be able to come in and just enjoy preaching. Because some, it's, if you've never preached, you don't know what I'm talking about when I say this. But you go places sometimes it's just hard to preach. You know, you're preaching. If you, you, how many of you cook? Any, we have any cooks in the house that like to cook? How would you like to cook and prepare a meal and everybody just come in and look all sad and down and out? And you keep having to tell them, hey, y'all come eat. It's here. You know? You'd be sitting there thinking they don't want what you cook. You'd be like, well, I got some other stuff over here I can throw on the grill, you know. I got some over here I'm throwing. Yeah, anybody, how would that make you feel? <laughs> but so I appreciate this one of the places I, in my years of preaching that has always just been a joy to preach to you. And uh, it's an honor to be here tonight. I appreciate your pastor and his family. Can we give them a hand clap tonight? What an awesome man and woman of God and children that you have here, their families. Uh, you are tremendously blessed. I'll never forget. We was trying to remember when I was here the first time, and uh, they said somebody you cut. And I remembered at or, uh, after we was away from each other the day that it was. It was a youth conference thing that we did, and we came over on a Saturday. We was somewhere on a Friday, and then we came here on Saturday. It was one of the first times we were here. But what a joy it is to see what God is doing, the growth. Amen. And I, people say with Facebook, it makes you feel like you live with people. Amen. I mean, you're in the house. You know what they're eating for breakfast. You know, you know when the dog's in the yard playing around. I mean, they show everything. And so you live with each other. Amen. So then when you see each other, you realize, you know, I, I haven't even, I don't think uh, I've been here since the baby was born. I Y'all got married, I think, either just had got married or was supposed to get married the last time I was here. I can't remember. Anyway, a lot of things have happened, so I feel like I've been part of all that. That baby's beautiful. Amen. But I hadn't even got to see her yet. Amen. But I tell you what, I, I, I got tickled today because, um, amen, when they picked me up, I tell you what, he is his daddy's twin. <laughs> he sounds like him on the phone. <laughs> Uh, then talking to him, if I would close my eyes in the car and I got tickled because I remember the few times when pastors picked me up 
and was driving. Uh, even the way he held his head, the way he talked, amen, to me. I said, he's just like his daddy. Amen. Then I'm thinking, I sure hope Caden's that way. Amen. Praise God. I hope he don't look like me, but I just hope he <laughs> But uh, it is an awesome privilege to be here with you, precious people, and looking for what God's going to do. I do apologize. I was a little few minutes late tonight. Having a little problem there with some stuff at the motel, the rooms and the door. Amen. Got that all situated. Amen. But, uh, it, you know, it's sad where we're living at right now. Uh, it says a little paper there on their thing. It says, please forgive us. Uh, we are very short-staffed. And uh, we're living in such a time when people, uh, where these companies and these businesses are going through so much. Can you say amen? Praise God. And uh, but uh, and it's tough. It's, it's it's not it's not there. A lot of them. It's not there. It's not the people's fault. Amen. Those that do come in. I I walked in a Hardee's, and uh, on my way home last week, and uh, to get breakfast, and it was in North Carolina. And uh, a 70 something year old lady, she was there and she was cleaning up the garbage thing there. And you know, those wet uh, things, says wet floor, caution, wet floor. She was even scrubbing it. I walked over to her, I said, You are a sight for sore eyes. Yeah. And boy, bless her heart, I guess I called her, startled her. She looked up and said, What'd you say? <laughs> you know, I, I thought, Lord, this is going to be a mean one here, <laughs> you know. But I, she going to think crazy. I said, you are a sight for sore eyes. And she said, what would you say? I said, ma'am. I said, in this world that we're living in, I said, they don't, nobody want to work. Like, I said, no, they just treat. She said, honey, I've been doing this for 52 years. She went into, she said, this place right here is the number one Hardee's in North Carolina. She said, we sell a million biscuits a year. I said, Lord, glory to God. <laughs> Amen. But I tell you what, she, she knew everybody's name that came in. And uh, she had worked in all kinds of business stuff. But as a retired person, she's just finding something to do. But I tell you what, it done my heart good to see uh, her in the spirit of excellence that she worked in. And uh, people come, people's coming in. You know, that hearty sometimes they, a lot of people eat there. Uh, amen. Uh, a lot of the older folks that eat there. And they, they know it. And she knew everybody by name. She even was helping take some of them, their coffee and all that stuff. I said, man, in this time and hour, this is a, a blessing. So we got to have a good conversation there concerning all that. Amen. But uh, in traveling, you see that a lot. And it's becoming strenuous, amen, in our travels. Amen. But the Lord knows all about it, don't he? Did you come to have church with me tonight? I didn't talk too much. Amen. <clears throat> I want to get in and worship the Lord. Believe the Lord to have his way was in the mountains of North Carolina last week. And I'm telling you what, God met us such a powerful way. It was that back in the boondocks. And the Lord had the spirit of the Lord has to lead you to that church. I told him, I said, the spirit of the Lord has to lead you out here. I said, y'all have to have a bus ministry at this church because people ain't finding y'all. Amen. <laughs> y'all got to go find them. Amen. But I'm telling you what, the Lord knew where they were. I mean, it's packed out, amen, and I'm telling you what, the Spirit of the Lord was so heavy, amen, and I'm telling you what, we had a time, and I feel that same atmosphere here tonight, and I know God's going to meet us, got to, amen, I feel a little intimidated coming behind all these men of God that's already been here, amen, but we're going to get in and do our part, amen, let the Lord have his way these two nights and believe God to meet with us, can you say amen, amen. praise God, you worship the Lord with us tonight. kids and my family do all this stuff now so I don't do much but, uh, I'm not in transpose anymore. all things that will work out for my good don't need a four leaf clover don't need to knock on wood cause my life is completely in your hands before my heart was beating I know I was in your plans so let the sun stop burning and this world that's not turning let it all stop on a time I won't worry at all cause you of mine. All things gonna work out 
for my good I don't need a four-leaf clover No need to knock on wood Cause my life is completely in your hands Before my heart was beating God know I was in your plans So let the sun stop burning And this world Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Mm, all things are going to work out for my good. I don't need a four-leaf clover. I don't have to knock on any wood. Because my life is completely in your hands. Before my heart was beating, I know I was in your plans. So let the sun stop burning. And if this world that's now turning, what if it all stopped on a time? We don't have to worry at all. Because Jesus is our peace of mind. So you know what we're going to do? Hallelujah. We're going to walk on the water in the midst of our storm. With you in the fire, I won't be harmed if by others forsaken. You remain faithful. Your love is much stronger than time. I won't worry at all Cause you are my peace of mind Oh, you're my peace of mind Jesus is my peace of mind 
Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad of that tonight? Amen. I said, aren't you glad of that tonight? Praise God. I don't have, you can't get no worse than the sun to stop burning. If that happens, it's over. You can't get no worse than the world to stop turning. If that happens, it's over. I mean, it's catastrophic. Amen. But I ain't going to worry at all because Jesus is my peace of mind. Praise God. Aren't you glad of that tonight? Amen. Praise God. Amen. What I was saying concerning a while ago, yes, last week and this week, but meaning that church, precious church, I didn't mean that bad they were in the boondocks. I said, I may not need to say that like they didn't mean it bad. I said that to them, cutting up with them. Amen. But what I was saying is God knows where we are. And uh, I'm telling you what, the presence of the Lord was just as real there as it is here. And that's the point I was making. <clears throat> Amen. And I've been places uh, where, where I, one of the greatest churches in our, our school of ministry time that we ever preached in uh, was uh, down a dirt road in a trailer park in a double wide. When I, I was headed there, and my son had booked that and scheduled that, and I said, where are we going? He said, Dad, I don't have a clue. We ain't never been here. And uh, we had just been at Jeremiah Yoakum's for two nights, and we was headed down there. It's called Holy Ground Holiness Church. And I'm telling you what. I called the pastor, and I said, we've, we're about to be there. I said, we're running behind a little bit. I said, you have an iron you can set up that we can iron our clothes real quick. The girls need to iron their clothes. She said, Brother, I don't even own an iron. I said, oh, Lord, have mercy on us for sure. I don't know where we're headed right now. But I am telling you what, in the history of the 10 years of our school, it's one of the greatest revivals we ever had. Down that dirt road, in a double wide, in a trailer park. I'm telling you what, and I took that pulpit, I felt like I turned 15 all over again and was preaching for the first time. And I'm telling you what, God met us there. Why? Amen. Praise God. Thank God for the buildings. Thank God for everything that God blesses us with. Amen. But amen, it's in our hearts that are hungry for him. Can you say amen? Praise God. I want us to turn tonight, if you will, with me just a moment in Revelations. Revelations chapter number uh, one. We'll read chapter number one just a little bit here. And I'm not going to try to, to hold you long uh, concerning the reading. But um, I'm going to paraphrase some of this and just run through it. But to get the gist of what I'm saying tonight, uh, I will have to say some, some of this here. And uh, Revelations chapter number 1, Revelations chapter number 1. Amen. The Bible says toward the end of chapter number 1 that he said, John, here writing, said, I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. In the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Everybody say this, in the midst. Amen. Say it with me again. In the midst Amen. of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Clothed with a garment down to the foot, girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head, his hair were like white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were as a flame of fire. His feet like they burned in a fine brass as they burned in a furnace. His voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. John said, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as a dead man. He laid his hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, for I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Yes. And have the keys of hell and of death. Write these things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars 
are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Now, if you started reading chapter 2, and just quickly, I want you to see this and understand this so you can get the gist of what I'm going to say to you tonight. Revelation chapter number 2, he now starts talking to what John heard the Lord say concerning the seven churches. The seven churches of Asia, the main churches of that time. They represent church ages. They also represent the, the times that we would pass through and go through. I believe that we all face this in our lives at some point, all seven of them. I believe at different times in our, of our lives, amen, we wrestle these things, amen, that all seven face. But also believe, amen, that it's prophetic and that it's the, the foretelling of the church and the church age all the way to the last age being the latest seeing age, which is the age we would be in right now which would be the age of uh, lukewarmness and comfort zones. And, uh, and so when you begin to look at this and understand this, but that I, 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 that's so much teaching and preaching in all of these churches. But the main thing I want you to see, amen, here, uh, he's in the midst of these churches. Can you say amen? And the angels are in the palm of his hand. Under the angel of the church of Ephesus, can we paraphrase real fast, write these things. That hath holdeth the seven stars in the right hand, who walketh, everybody say it with me, in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. He said, I know your works. I know your labor. I know your patience. I know that you canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. He brags on them. He said, you are born and have patience, and for my name's sake you've labored and hath not fainted. But then he says, but nevertheless, I have somewhat against you because you have left your first love. If you look at verse 3 of that end part, I, I'm paraphrasing and missed one of the best parts of that. He says, and hast not fainted. You've kept going through it all. And you haven't fainted. Then he says, but nevertheless, I have somewhat against you because you've left your first love. Remember from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I'll come unto thee quickly, and remove the candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. It would do you well to study the Nicolaitans, find out who and what that is, because he said, you, you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. When you're looking at this and you're seeing this is one of the last messages written down in Holy Scripture from Jesus Christ, it'd do you good to, to study what he likes, what he dislikes, what he shines his light concerning. He says, the Nicolaitans. Then he says, but then he says, but if you, amen, overcome, I'm going to give you the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Then he said, the church of Smyrna, write these things, saith the first and last, which was dead and alive, and know your works, the tribulation, poverty, thou art rich. Amen. Uh, that, that thou the tribulation and poverty, but, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried. And you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. He that hath an ear, will I let him hear what the, he let him hear what the Spirit saith to the church? He that overcometh shall not suffer the second death. Unto the angel of the church of Pergamos write these things. Won't you listen to this? These things saith he which hath the sharp sword of the two edges. I know thy works where thou dwellest. Listen, where even Satan's seed is. He says, I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. The evilness and, and, and the ungodliness to the point that he says Satan's seed is. And thou hast... Holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. Pergamus must have been a pretty bad place. Can you shout amen? 
But I have a few things against you, he says, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them among you that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. But he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saveth he that receiveth it. Can you shout amen? And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira, write these things. He said, you, the, the, he that hath the eyes like flame of fire. No, your works, your charity, your service, your faith, your patience, your works. And, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against you because you've suffered that woman, Jezebel, who calleth herself the prophetess to teach, to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Who would like to be a part of that church? But yet there they were, and I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into the bed, then them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I kill her children with death, and all of the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and the hearts, and I give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, listen to this, but unto you I say, and unto the rest... In Thyatira. He's dealing with all these people in that church. He said, but they send the rest of you here. <laughs> I know it's a lot of reading, but I want you to get all this right here. He said, unto the rest of you. How many say, I want to be part of that unto the rest of them? As many as I have not this doctrine in which I have not known the depths. that He says, they are some of the rest of you as many as have not this doctrine. Which have not known the depths of Satan. As they speak, I will put upon you a none, none of other burden, but that which you have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nation. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And as the vessels of potter shall they be broken and shivers. Even as I received of my father I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. Now chapter 3 deals with Sardis. He says these things you know. He said the watchful be strengthful. Strengthen the things that remain. He said remember therefore how thou hast received and heard. Hold fast repent if therefore thou shalt not watch. I will come in thee as a thief. He said, you have a few names in Sardis which have not defiled their garments. They shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, will not blot his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the church. Philadelphia, write these things to that church. These things saith the Holy One. He that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth not... No man shutteth and shutteth and no man open. I know your works. Behold, you've set before me thee an open door. I've set before thee an open door. No man can shut it, he says. He said, for thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied my name. Can you shout amen? Man, these churches encouraging, but he also probes them, deals with them. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they're Jews and are not, but do lie, behold, amen, I will make them to come and worship before, amen, amen, thy feet to know that I have loved thee because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Also, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon the world. Behold, I come quickly, hold fast that which thou hast. He that overcometh this age and this time this culture will I make a pillar in the temple of my God and shall go no more out and I write upon him the name of my God the name of the city of my God which is New Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven my God I will write him in my new name he that hath an ear let him hear with the spirit now to the latest sea in church he said these things saith the amen the faithful true in the beginning of the creator know your works that you are neither cold nor hot I would that thou weren't cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, 
I will spew thee out of my mouth. He says, you, 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 the condition that you're in causes me to be nauseated. And causes me to... Now, this is not my message tonight. I just want you to see the condition of each of these churches. Amen. I wouldn't want to belong to at least five of them. Two of them is all positive, but five of them he dealt. And if that was me, I wouldn't want that to be my church. I wouldn't want it to be what I was a part of. And then this one, he says, you make me so sick that I want to vomit. Now, I'm going to tell you, American Christianity won't teach you that. Uh, we're in nine high schools, nine high schools uh, uh, a week preaching this gospel. And I, and I go in, you start preaching red letter, people get frustrated. I, I'll go into them high schools and public high schools and I start preaching some of this right here. And their eyes get big. You can tell they never heard none of this a day in their life. I said, how many's ever heard this? Not just this, but you start quoting disciples. He says, he, Jesus said, if you're going to be my disciple, amen, you got to take up the cross, deny yourself. He said, you got to love me more than you love anything else. Your love for me has got to make everything else in your life look like hate, or you can't be my disciple. Amen. People look at me with, I, I said, Did, you've never heard, your, your pastor's never taught you this. Never heard this. And you go to church. But see, when you see this, this American gospel, don't teach you this. But he says, this culture, this kind of church world, this kind of age of lukewarmness would cause me to be nauseated. Yes. You are neither cold nor hot. Amen. You are just lukewarm. I was telling the boys today coming down the road, I, one of my coaches the other or last year made a statement. The year before last, he made this statement in the, in, in the weight room. I thought, my God. You're preaching to me. He looked at all of them. They had come across the, the, the speaker system and said, can you send student so-and-so to my office? He was dumbfounded. Had had that student a whole year in that class. And he says, who? And didn't know who they were. And he turned to look at one of the other guys and he said, who? and they said, you know, so-and-so. He said, oh, okay. And then he went to explain himself. He said, he said that's, that's sad. That I don't know who they are. Have they been here all year? He said, because to me, he said, the only ones I remember are my troublemakers and my playmakers. But them that don't do either, I don't remember them. I'm not going to stay here. This ain't my message. I got a positive one for you tonight. <laughs> Don't sound like it. Y'all going, Lord, Pastor, you done brought him in here, and he's, he's throwing a blanket on what we... <laughs> my playmakers and my troublemakers. And I said, Lord, help me now, because your Bible is... The only ones in that Bible are the playmakers and the troublemakers. The troublemakers, the one he deals with, and the playmakers. Matter of fact, in one scripture in Numbers, they did nothing and 40 years is missing because they did nothing. Comfortable. Satisfied. God says that kind of living causes me. Can you say amen? One of the boys said, coming down the road, Sebastian, I, I, I quote you a lot on this. You said years ago when you was at our church, you, you, you made this statement. The most damnable thing to a home is not a drug addict father or alcoholic father, but it's a father who sits in the church every Sunday and hears this, but never becomes this. Amen. He teaches his child, there's nothing to this. Yeah. I'm not here, I promise. I want you to see the condition of this church. Yes. It's, it, it causes him. He said, I vomit. He said, this lukewarmness, this comfort. Why? And he said, it causes me to be nauseated to the point that I will spew you out of my mouth. Because you sayest, I'm rich and I'm increased with goods. And I don't have need of nothing. But knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor yes. And blind and naked. 
I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich in white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that thou the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see and as many as I love I rebuke and chasten be zealous therefore and repent. Man that sounds like some tough stuff right there. Can you shout amen? Just like y'all feeling right now a little hopeless with me talking about all of that stuff right there. But then he says behold Behold, in every last one of them, he's in the midst of them. In spite of all the garbage, in spite of all the junk, in spite of all the mess, he's standing in the midst of them. And even in this one that makes him so sick, he wants to vomit. He said, but behold, I'm standing right outside the door. (laughs) I'm standing right outside the door. And if any man, We'll open up that door. If any man, somebody shout any man with me. I don't care how messed up it is and how lukewarm it is and how backslid and how compromised it is. He said, if I can just get one of you to come over here and open this door, I'm going to come in and sup with you and you're going to sup with me. Can you shout amen? Woo! Somebody shout any man. Any man. Amen. But I want to say this right here. If he's standing at the door of that kind of church, how much more is he standing in the midst of this church? He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open up that door to him, then he says to him that overcome will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and I'm set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the church. Now, I'm jumping over to quote some scripture here, and then I'm going to preach to you after reading all of that. The Bible said in Jeremiah 32 and 17, Oh, Lord God. Now, see, I have to emphasize that because you can't see it. I'm saying, but it's, amen, Uh, it's in parenthesis, Ah, A-H, comma, Lord God, exclamation mark. Ah, Lord God. Oh, Lord God. Oh, Lord God. It is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Exclamation mark. Nothing. Nothing is too hard for you. (laughs) Woo! I dare you to lift your hands right now and say, oh Lord God, you who by your outstretched arm has created all of this, there's nothing too hard for you. There's nothing too hard for you, exclamation mark. Can you shout amen? Amen. Jeremiah 32 and 27, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? God says, is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Jeremiah 18 and 14. At the appointed time when I return to you about this time next year and Sarah shall have a son. Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Job 42, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. No purpose of yours can be stopped, shut down. Amen. Somebody shout amen. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. Then Philippians jumps in there and starts saying, I can do all things. Woo! Somebody say that with me. I can do all things through him which strengthens me. Can you shout amen? Now unto him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we could ever think, ask, or dream according to the power that's worketh in us. And whatsoever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have Faith. Can you shout amen? Behold, I'm the Lord God, God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Praise God. In other words, it just can't stop him. And if it can't stop him, then why am I going to let it stop me? 
if it can't stop him, then why are we going to let it stop us? Can you shout amen? amen. We're living in troublesome times. We're living in a time. Now you listen to what I'm going to say to you. I don't want to get off on the negative, but I'm going to tell you. Had, had, had we faced tribulation in a way of persecution, we would have been almost prepared for it. Because them old men of God have preached it and caused us to tremble and hold on to the backs of the seats. Fear of the end of time. But I am telling you, not one of them preachers ever preached about COVID-19. None of them preachers told us about pandemics. None of them, to, come on somebody, told us about the isolation. Nobody told us that we preachers were going to have to watch our precious people go into eternity without us standing by their side. Nobody told us we was going to preach in pulpits to cameras to, 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 amen, to empty seats. Come on, somebody, where we have to put pictures of our congregation. Come on, hallelujah. I don't know what all y'all did, but I, I, I'm involved in, 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 in my community, and I'm involved in our city, and I'm involved with our government. I mean, as far as those things, senators watch our lives. And so I, I try to be as effective as I can. And so I behave to the best of my ability until I could not not behave anymore until I started having to obey God rather than man. And even then, I went down to the mayor's office, and I said, now listen to me. I said, I want you to know I love you, and I want you to know I I've done everything within my power to do what you've asked of me. Come on, somebody. He said, Greg, you ain't, Pastor Greg, you ain't telling me nothing. He said, I've been down there playing my instrument all day today. He said, because I miss it so bad. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, I said to him, I said, sir, I said, and I called him by name. I said, we're going to start back whether Grandma Ivy lets us or not. That's what we call our governor at home. Amen. We call her Grandma Ivy because she's an older southern bell lady. Amen. We just call her Grandma Ivy. And I said, whether Grandma Ivy lets us or not, I said, we are starting back church come this Sunday. And I said, I just want you to know that. I said, I'm going to do my best. I said, we're going to social distance 10 feet apart. Not 6 feet. We're going to do 10 feet. Hallelujah. I said, we got the best of the best spray that we can find. I said, so and guess what? You're going to have your own labeled seats. So the Joneses are going to sit there and the Atkins are going to sit there and the Hodges are going to sit there. Come on, the Pruitts are going to, you understand what I'm saying? But guess what? I also got in my altar and put tape on the floor so we could have altar calls. And I said, the Atkins are going to pray here and the Hodges are going to pray here and if the Holy Ghost gets to move and moves us out of our little areas then we're okay because he's going to take care of us. Come on somebody. By the help and grace of God, we didn't have one during this entire time. Came in to get the amen COVID during that time. Amen from a service that we had. Help me now. Amen. But I want to tell you, there was a space there. Amen. I'm trying, I matter of fact, my mayor, I looked, he said, he said, Greg, he said, he said, we he said, ain't nobody gonna arrest nobody. Amen. I said, thank you, pal. Amen. He said, Pastor, there ain't nobody gonna arrest nobody. Amen. He said, Amen. It's, it'd be the federal government anyway, said it'd be the state troopers. And I said, Well, he goes to my church. I said, so we're going to be all right. I said, he's been sitting there every Sunday anyway. Amen. He's been there when nobody been there. Praise God. Woo, somebody shout amen. Are you listening to me? But it was a strange time. It was, it was a time. Amen. That I didn't understand. A time that I was not ready for. Amen. I'm going to tell you. Amen. I, I, I left the pulpit. We're preaching and praying and singing. They're getting the Holy Ghost at home. Families being slain in the spirit in the middle of their kitchen. In the middle of the living room. We had revival. You'll know why. It just can't stop it. There ain't no circumstances. There ain't no situation that we can find ourselves in, even if it's a strange time, that can stop him from doing what he does and being who he is. Are y'all going to have church with me tonight? Hallelujah. Yes, I had to leave. There was a many times. Two or three Sundays I left the pulpit. I was high. I've been preaching my best, not letting anybody see me waver. But I left and went down into my office in the side of that platform. And I wept 
and I sobbed and I cried because no matter how powerful it was and no matter how much God was moving I missed my people I wanted to touch them I wanted to hug them. Is anybody hearing me right now? Hallelujah. We broke out in August of that of last year in a three week revival. Amen. Are you listening to me? Jam packed every night. Amen. God met with us and helped us. But I come to tell you tonight Amen. That it's just almost as if when you begin to read this stuff that there's an air in the scripture. Amen. Are you hearing me? We've come here tonight to be filled with hope. We've come here to be filled with vision. We come here determined to make a difference in our lives in people's lives. But suddenly reality resurfaces with us. Hope gets harnessed. Bridges amen, are accomplished. Are you listen here? Because we are reminded that we got to go home. Can you shout amen? We got to go home to insufficiencies. We got to go home to intractable problems. Uh, we got to go home are you hearing me? Amen to irrepaired stuff. Amen in unequipped situations we know what he could have done and we know what he will do someday but now things being as they are come on somebody no matter the political climate the social collapse the moral corruption come on somebody and the contagiousness of false belief it all just can't stop him and if it can't stop him then it ain't gonna stop me if it don't stop him then it ain't gonna stop me we need to come to the place that you lift your hands and say if it can't stop the Holy Ghost then it can't stop us I said hallelujah amen evangelist amen are you listening to me? pastor be I was, I, I'm gonna be real with me we're gonna be raw with each other right here you ready amen how many times have we as pastors come on somebody amen people in our congregation that that we've just wore out that that we're wore out with we get tired amen and it just seems like we're pouring water into a, 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 a bottomless buckets you understand what I'm talking about and you be almost to the point. Amen. You're done. You done gave and gave and gave. And, 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 and you're not seeing anything happening. And then, 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 then things are said. And complaints can be made and all that stuff. And so you'll just be so frustrated. But all of a sudden you call an evangelist in. Come on somebody. Y'all, y'all don't look all sanctified on me. I'm going I'm to really get real with you right here. I've been there with me and my wife. Had been in a little argument. <laughs> she done cried and her eyes a little swollen. And that preacher going to walk over there and say, Yea, I say unto thee. You've been under a dark cloud. She's going, Yes, his name is Pastor Greg Atkins. You know, I'm sitting here saying, You ain't a real prophet. You wouldn't be praying for her if you would. You'd be praying for me. Come on, don't y'all look at me like that. Y'all know what I'm telling. I mean, the enemy going to fight you. It's going to be a dear revival. Come on, somebody. Boy, y'all getting quiet. I have in the first part of our marriage, not now, in the first part of our marriage, I have put my clothes on the bed, started packing them, and said, you tell the evangelist to preach good tonight. <laughs> Get there, and he prophesied to her. Come on, somebody. But I've been there. When I, and the evangelist comes in. And I'm telling you what, he'll be preaching all of a sudden. He'll go straight to that one. Yeah. Yeah, I say. I'm going. <laughs> you missing it. It's the one sitting beside her. <laughs> Don't prophesy to her. Prophesy to that one on the next seat. That one's a devil. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You don't want to say amen too loud. <laughs> Come on. Any of you been in church very long, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm telling you what. Amen. He, it's like they are magnets and draws them. And he goes right to them. I'm sitting there on the stage having to pray through frustration. And I can't have revival because he's prophesying to the devils. He's prophesying to the ones causing the problems. He's prophesying to the ones, come on somebody, that, that, that he needs to say, amen, something else too. 
But I'm telling you, I'm sitting that stage and all of a sudden it dawns on me, boys. It didn't stop the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost don't have the frustration. And the Holy Ghost ain't seen what I've seen. And the Holy Ghost ain't felt the betrayal. To the, come on, somebody. And in spite of all that, he still moves toward them. And God can't do that through me. Because I am seeing the hurt and the pain and the frustration. And I'm going to say to you again. If it can't stop him. Then it shouldn't stop me. If it can't stop him, then it shouldn't stop me. Amen. He preaches and moves of God. Amen. And he, I'm just like, he just don't know. Amen. No, it's the fact that the Holy Ghost was moving that man of God to them, but he didn't know what I knew. He didn't feel what I felt. He hadn't faced what I had faced with him, and the Holy Ghost went straight to him. Why? Because he's saying, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've been doing, I'm still in the middle of the candlesticks I'm telling you if you grasp what I'm preaching to you right now and you look at the seven churches of Asia and you look at his rebuke and you look at his amen his, his judgmentalness coming down on them but he says at the end of it look where I'm at I'm still in the midst of each one of them <laughs> but one of them he's on the outside of and that's because they put him on the outside but I'm telling you right now he never left them and if it ain't going to stop him then it ain't going to stop us it's almost a paradox it's almost almost a spiritual error to look at all of that junk and yet he still be right there in the middle of it it's almost like bipolarness come on somebody he's speaking with one breath and then speaking with another breath saying I'm going to move I'm going to bless you I'm going to work I've been to churches they told me I shouldn't go to I've been to places they told me that you'll, you'll lose your ministry if you go there because the movement and the fellowship didn't want it they had wrote them off but I found out when I got there he was still in the midst of them I went to that little country church in Georgia and when I did they told me said you're going to hate it there Greg he, they said said you a fireball this is back when I was evangelist said you a fireball preacher said 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 they dead at 4 o'clock in the morning ain't had nobody got the Holy Ghost in 20 years at that church said you're going to hate it you run and shout and scream and holler they just sit and look at you amen said it's dead I'm telling you people drove three and a half to four hours to come to that revival when I kicked it off but you don't know what happened I got to that at church a week early I walked up to the pastor's door they were farmers and I knocked on the door and when I did the screen door the daughter of the pastor come and looked at me took off down the hallway they're, they're, they like to cut up anyway so I thought he's cutting up with me by that time the pastor come to the door he said he said what you doing here I said I thought he's cutting up I said have revival brother he said yeah next week I said are you serious I done messed up my schedule. I was a week early instead of a week late. I was a week early. Better be early than late. He said, I'll tell you what. He, I said, I can go home, man. I'll be back next week. I ain't that booked right now. I was a young evangelist. He said, no, it may be God. He said, we're going to have church tonight. And if it goes, we'll just take on off. And what we realized and he found out was some of them would plan. Come on, somebody. Second shift when he would have revival so they didn't have to come. So they were in third shift that week. <laughs> Second shift next week. So they all had to come. And we had revival. I preached four nights and I'm telling you what the Holy Ghost finally fell in that house and one of them old farmer boys jumped up and said I can't God, I can't God he walked around for 45 minutes hollering I can't God and I was like Lord bless him there's 60 other people in this room that needs help and he's walking around crying and praying we couldn't go no further than the service 
I said, bless him. Nobody else is being blessed but him. But Lord, bless him. Help him to say yes to you. By that time, he said, yes, God. When he did, the power of God fell in that house. When he did, a man jumped up. Matter of fact, his daddy jumped up, throwed his hands in the air and said, glory to God. When he did, the whole place was in an uproar. And all of a sudden, amen, I said to the pastor, he got through shouting and running. I said, what's going on? He said, that's, that's my daddy said, he ain't raised his head, his hands or his arms above his head. in about several teen years, amen, about 17 years, he ain't been able to raise his arthritis is in his shoulders. Amen. Daddy, what happened? He said, when, when he said yes to God, he said, I thought, went to throw my hands up. He said, remembered I couldn't. He said, but I did it anyway. And he said, I heard something pop. God healed him instantly. When he did a 64 or 5 year old woman over here in the amen corner been sitting there because that's where mama sat. When mama died, she'd come up there and sat in mama's spot. But I'm telling you what, God filled her with the Holy Ghost. She spun around and shouted and danced and talked in tongues and God filled her with the Holy Ghost first time in 20 years. You don't know what? We broke out in a three week revival. Amen. That ended up lasting for two solid years. People saved every Sunday. Healed. Delivered filled with the Holy Ghost. You want to know why? It had stopped all the fellowship in churches, but it hadn't stopped God. And if it ain't going to stop God, why should we let it stop us? Is anybody going to have church with me here tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Do you feel the Holy Ghost on the inside of you? I was in Kokoi, Church of God, in Okoy, Florida. And about that time I was preaching and singing. We were singing that old song. Amen. See the bright light shine. It's just about home time. And about that time, the power of God had failed. And we was in a, amen, on into the altar service and we were singing and shout. All of a sudden, little sister, she, amen, she's in her late 60s. She had muscular dystrophy and she was all crippled up and bound up like this. And she had walked into the church like this. She was pitiful. But that little mama praised and magnified God to the best of her ability and her little deformity. And I'm telling you, as sure as I'm standing, here these brown shoes uh, hey man on this Monday night I was singing turn around looked at her and all of a sudden she loosed and her arms came loose her legs came loose her hands went up in the air that muscular dystrophy loosed her she looked up and smiled and throwed her hands up in the air and took off running she come running around that building she run past me one time she come running around the second time she come around the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time, the sixth time, and the seventh time, she was smiling from ear to ear. And I am telling you, I can't explain it, but I was there and saw it with my own eyes. I saw her run around seven times, but when the Spirit lifted off of her, she went back in her deformity. Her arms twisted, her muscles twisted, her legs twisted, and she went right back in the... Why God didn't heal that woman, I don't know, but I'm telling you this. She stood up and she was crying and praising the Lord. She said, and smiling from ear to ear. She said, y'all didn't know I could do that, did you? Amen. She said, neither did I. She said, I didn't do it. The Holy Ghost did it. She said, because the Holy Ghost don't have no muscular dystrophy. The Holy Ghost don't have cancer. The Holy Ghost don't have anxiety. The Holy Ghost don't have depression. The Holy Ghost ain't got marital problem. The Holy Ghost ain't got amen rebellious children. Oh somebody help me pray. The Holy Ghost ain't got bitterness. Hallelujah. And you know what he's saying? It can't stop him. None of that stops him. Neither should we let it stop us. I'm telling you to shake off those heavy bands tonight. Lift up those holy hands. I said shake off the heavy bands. Lift up the holy hands. Amen. It ain't going to stop God. It ain't going to stop us. I said, hallelujah. He said, will I find faith when I return? Yes. I'm going to preach it like I never preached it before. Though I buried more people than I have in my entire ministry. I'm going to have faith when he comes. He's still God. And nothing's too hard for God. Somebody lift your hands and give him praise.
praise in this house. There's nothing too hard for God. The Bible declares that the days of perilous times are going to come. Anybody have in church with me? Why don't you lift your hands right now in spite of whatever's on you? In spite of the muscular dystrophy of your life. What's got you cramped? What's got you limited? What's got you bound up? Come on, somebody. I don't know why God didn't just go ahead and heal that woman. But I'm telling you, amen, it loosed her and she was healed for about, amen, five minutes. Uh, and I don't understand all of that and can't explain it theologically. But I can tell you this. It did not stop the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. I've been sick as a dog climbing that pulpit and preaching when I was done. The Spirit lift off of me and I'd go right back in the condition I was in. Why? It can't stop him. The Bible said in Isaiah 46 and 10, and he shall do all his pleasure and his counsel shall stand. God's just going to do what God does. Hallelujah! And nothing can stop him. And I'm going to praise him like I know nothing can stop him. And I'm going to worship like I know it can't stop him. Because if it can't stop him, it ain't going to Stop me! They tried to tar and feather John, and it didn't work. He still preached the gospel. They tried, they tried to, to pull him apart, and it didn't work. He still preached the gospel. Come on, somebody. They, 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 they put him in a kettle of oil, and he just wouldn't boil. Anybody hearing me? The crowd was crying to kill him and, and to bull him. But the louder they cried, the louder John tried to preach. He was born of a virgin, wrapped in swaddling clothes, laid in a manger. And on the third day, he died on Calvary and on the third day resurrected. History teaches us that the more they lowered him in the ground or into that bull and oil, the quieter the crowd become and the louder he was. Said you could see as they lowered him deeper and further, the more silent the crowd become until there wasn't but one voice that was being heard, and it was John's. God brought all of those heathens there to kill John. But God said, I'm going to turn around and give it a platform for the gospel. And every last one of you are going to hear the gospel. The blood of martyrs was the seed of the gospel. And every time they would burn them at the stake, they would end up winning more people to God than they did before. Because it just can't stop him. I could preach to you. Woo! We're part of a church. Uh, amen. That the devil can't do nothing with. Uh, I said we're part of an entity that the devil can't do nothing with. Hallelujah. If it can't stop him, it ain't going to stop me. If it can't stop him, it ain't going to stop me. Come on, somebody. Though a righteous man fall at seven times, yet shall it get up uh, again. Uh, amen. Rejoice not against me, oh my enemy, when I fall. All I shall rise again. Amen. Though I sit in darkness, he shall be a light unto me. Why? It can't stop him. So to tell you what we're going to do, we're going to take John and put him on the Isle of Patmos. If we can get him on that Isle of Patmos, out there in the middle of that, that sea, with salt water to drink and molded bread, we'll have him right where we want him. If we can't kill him, we're going to cut his influence off. If we can't kill him, we're going to shut his effectiveness off. We'll make it where he can't preach. Or he can't, he'll still preach, but he ain't going to be preaching nothing but lunatics. Because that's all that was out there on that island. Lunatic mind. It's, it's the crazy word of that day. The worst prison known to man at that time. We're going to put him out there in that insane asylum. Who's he going to preach to out there? How's he going to affect anybody? How's he going to do the gospel out there? So he's out there eating molded bread and drinking some salt water. Going to kill him. And guess what John says? I, John. Your brother in tribulation. You ready? Was in the spirit. On the Lord's day. Yes. 
If you can just get in the spirit, it can't stop him. It ain't gonna stop you either. Come on, somebody. I've been there when I've had to preach and people sit in the crowd that couldn't stand me. Come on, somebody. Would curse me in, while I'm preaching. Come on, somebody. Tell me to shut up from their seats. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Call me names. Amen. You don't know what blessed their hearts? I never even heard it because I was in the spirit. People told me out of church, amen, but I was in the spirit. Amen, I was in Dominican preaching the gospel in the middle of this outdoor thing. And I mean, there was thousands, hundreds, hundred people to a thousand people out there in that crowd. Amen. And the witch lady of that community come there to stop that service. Come on, somebody. But how many knows? She couldn't stop it. She tried, but she couldn't stop it. Come on, somebody. We ended up in a Holy Ghost breakout. And it's like an earthquake hit that ground. And everybody that was standing on the ground where we were they started screaming healings tumors was leaving bodies people was being slain and healed instantly come on somebody my daughter was on the stage singing she said daddy where was it I said baby it's happening all over the ground amen amen it's a normal for there amen she's thinking here somebody gets healed here it's all attraction everybody's attracted to the healing but not there they're getting healed everywhere all because that woman come to stop that service come on somebody but when the men of God gathered around my I'm trying to preach. She started hollering at me. Amen. Saying stop and trying to rebuke me. Come on somebody. But I'm telling you right now. I said in the name of Jesus. I rebuked her and kept on preaching. When I did them men of God come out from behind that trailer. Amen. And gathered around her. And when she did she went as limp as a noodle. And had to just sit down. They got her a chair to sit in at least. She'd slide out into the floor. She couldn't open her mouth the rest of that time. And an earthquake hit that place. And people were healed, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. It just can't stop him. Why? Ah, John, your brother in tribulation, God in the Spirit. I come to tell you, Life Point Church, you can't just come here. You got to get in the Spirit. You can't just come here and watch them sing. You got to get in the Spirit. You can't just bring your children here and expect it to happen. You got to get them in the Spirit. It ain't enough that my children sit on the pew on Sunday morning. My Bible says that my children shall prophesy and I'm not going to be satisfied till my children are prophesying. You got to raise the standard. You're happy because they come to church church you gotta say I ain't happy that they come to the house of God because that ain't enough they gotta get in the spirit I want them to prophesy my children shall also church with me we gotta get in the spirit amen is anybody hearing me I don't care how discouraged you are get in the spirit I don't care how much fear you face get in the spirit he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church he says I'm still here I know you're facing it I know you're going through it I know the torture come on somebody but it ain't stopping me and if you can get in the spirit it ain't gonna stop you either somebody lift your hands and say I'm not just going on Sunday I'm getting in the spirit I'm not just going to that revival and hear good teaching and preaching and revelation I gotta get in the spirit I gotta get in the spirit I gotta get in the anointing I gotta get in the presence of God oh Come on, I'm going to give you 30 seconds right now to give him praise without being worried to interrupting me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, I gotta get in the spirit. Hallelujah. I think it was John Wesley's mama had them children. They said she'd get, to, amen, to rock in that rocking chair and get to pray. They said she'd take and put her apron over her face. And them boys knew not to mess with mama when she was in the Holy Ghost. Mama done prayed and got in the spirit. I'm going to tell you, you know what your house needs? You got to pray and get in the spirit. I, John, your brother, 
in tribulation was in the spirit on the Lord's day in the middle of the worst prison known to man because it just can't stop him. And if it can't stop him, it ain't going to stop me. If the Holy Ghost falls on the middle of the island of the Isle of Patmos and takes John into the third heavens and shows him pearly gates and gates and streets of gold in the end of time. We got to get in the spirit. It's like that old preacher. Amen. His mama was known. She's a big, a heavy lady, real heavy lady. Amen. They called her old blue. And they was terrified of old blue because when she got mad, you was, in, you was in trouble. And old blue, he said, if we was poor, he said, we live in, in, in a rundown place. He said, it's just, 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 we didn't have nothing. He said, but old blue got saved. He said, just as mean as she was in the world, she was that mean in the spirit. Says so she went the total opposite, right? She is filled with the Holy Ghost. And he said, I'm telling you what, she was mean to the devil. I mean, you lift your hands. I want to be mean to the devil. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't want the devil. To, they used to say that. I want the devil. To, come on, somebody. To, lead, to say when I get up, oh, no, he's up again. I want him to say at night when I go to bed. Shoo, Thank God he's asleep. Amen. Come on, somebody. Thank God he's asleep for the next four hours. We got some work to do because he's going to be back up in about four hours. He's going to be going at it again. Come on, somebody. He's in Indianapolis now. Amen. Up in Muncie. Amen. Come on, somebody. Going to be home Wednesday. Going to be back out on Thursday. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Another state on Thursday. And I'll be in another state on Friday. Devil wish to God he'd stay asleep for a while come on I want to be mean to that devil I want him to despise me come on somebody are you hearing me He's, he said old blue got saved and I'm telling you he said she's just as mean to the devil as she was to people in the world he said we have nothing to eat he said me and my sisters was hungry he said old blue done, the, the daddy had got back trouble went down his back had back surgery they didn't have anything as a mess he said I'm telling you what old mama Old Blue, he said, she's a real heavy lady. He said, she's well over 300, 400 pounds. He said, in that little single wide trailer, he said, something Old Blue said, I'm going to that room, and I'm not coming out until we got food in this house. You know what Old Blue was saying? I'm about to go get in the spirit. He said, oh, Blue, went in that back trailer room. He said, I'm telling you what, she'd get to shouting and a praying and a talking in tongues. He said, she would bounce off the wall. <laughs> he said, sound like that Tasmanian devil. He said, she had hit one wall and that trailer would go, whoom. She had hit the other, whoom. He said, but we knew not to mess with Blue. Because she's in the spirit. He said, several hours later, he said, all of a sudden, in that trailer park pulled a truck. And all of a sudden, it pulled right down through those trailers to our trailer. He's about time it turned around and it started backing up. And we realized it was slammed full of groceries. He said, it was filled with groceries. He said, a man got out and said, do y'all need something to eat? <laughs> That preacher, young preacher, said, I'm telling you, he lived in her house. It's his mama. He said, I, we, my older sister said, yes, sir, we do. And he said, I was getting groceries, and the Lord told me to fill the back of my truck and told me just to start driving, and he would tell me where to go. And he told me to turn here, turn here, turn here, turn here, and he brought me right here. He said, me and my sisters got in there and unloaded all them groceries. He said, they were in the living room. They was in the kitchen. They was on the counter. He said, we even had them down the hall. Never seen that man before or since. He pulled out. He said, my sister looked at me and I looked at her and we was looking at my other sister. He said, we looked at her and said, is anybody going to tell old Blue? Because they knew not to knock on that door because she'd get them. He said, but we had to tell her because she'd done been in there hours. He said, when I knocked on that door, said all of a sudden she come to that door and open it up. 
you know not to mess with me when I'm praying. But mama, look. Said she looked down that hallway and there's groceries down each side. Said she just come down the hallway and shout. <laughs> we got to get in the spirit. I don't think you're hearing me. I ain't talking about you just pray till you start feeling something. And you really feel that tingling. I'm talking about you got to pray till you get in the spirit. I'm not just talking about you pray till you start talking. I'm talking you got to pray until you touch the heavens. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. He finished preaching that, told that story, went to sit down. The power of God was moving. Amen. The pastor got and said, you can't stop now. You got to tell the other story about old blue. Amen. He said, what's he said? He said, when you needed school clothes. Come on, somebody. He said, okay, pastor. And he got up and started obeying the pastor and started telling that story. He said, old blue. He said, we didn't have no money to get school clothes. He saw something old blue. Got in that closet again, that room praying. So she come out and said, come on, kids. We're going to the store. We're going to Walmart. So we went to Walmart and said, mama loaded down the buggy. He said, we knew she didn't have no money. Come on, somebody. He said, all of a sudden, we got in line. He said, the shoes, the clothes, the pants, the britches. He said, come on, somebody, the dress and everything we needed for school. She loaded it down because the Lord had told her to. He said, Mama, what are we going to do? She said, hush, son. God told me to go get everything we needed and just go like we're going to buy it. Hey, man. He said, all of a sudden, this, this guy's a man of God in half because he lived through that hell and faced all that stuff but watched old blue pray it through. Come on, somebody. He said, as a young boy, he said, I looked at mama. He said, I'm embarrassed because we got a buggy full of clothes and no money. He said, all of a sudden, she's next in line. He said, there's one person in front of us and a person in front of him. He said, I'm looking at mama. He said, I'm done starting to get upset myself. He said, look, pull the mama's dress. <laughs> he said, mama, look at my daughter. He said, she's just a talking in tongues. She couldn't talk in English. <laughs> she's in the spirit. She couldn't talk in English. She just swatted him away. About that time, a man in front of her got through getting his stuff, and he took two steps. When he did he stopped and turned around and said, Ma'am, everything she's got, put it on this card. It just can't stop him. Hallelujah. I said, it just can't stop him. I got to get in the spirit. John said, I, your brother in tribulation, was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me the sound of many waters and what they thought couldn't be effective and what they thought wouldn't make a difference and what they thought couldn't be the gospel to anybody. I'll tell you what it was. It was written down, amen, out there and it was written in similes. It was written uh, in analogies. It was written with hair like women and even serpents uh, it looked like a crazy man that's why the book of revelation is written that way because had he come off of the isle of patmos with the bible even saying thus saith the lord this 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 and this they had confiscated it he had to put it that way because when he they went through it they just slung it back at him and said he's a crazy man that prison done got to him but what they don't understand is what they thought couldn't be affected become the greatest effectiveness known to mankind the book of revelations it not only didn't just affect then it's still affecting today because it just can't stop him I come to tell you I don't know where you are and what all's going on in your life but I'm telling you right now how can we be having the move of God we're having and having the services we're having in the middle of pandemic in the middle of churches shutting down I I'll tell you why it just can't stop him and if it can't stop him then it ain't gonna stop us you ready watch this John says I John your brother in tribulation was in the spirit on the Lord's day was on the aisle you ready that they call Pat It does me. Because he says, this is the aisle. What do you call this place? <laughs> the worst prison known to man. He knew where he was going. His heart sunk when he was found out, I'm going to Patmos. But when he began to write, 
He said, I was in the aisle that they call Pappas. What do you call this place? What do you call this prison? He was done so far in the spirit. They told me this is the worst prison known to man that they call Pappas. Say it with me, that they call Pappas. If you can just get in the spirit. I said, if you can just get in the spirit, he'll, he'll turn your Patmos into paradise. And you won't even know where you're at to the point you say, I was in the aisle that they called the pandemic. I was in the aisle that they called the strange land. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Hallelujah. I was in the aisle that they call Patmos. And I'm going to tell you something else. For the next 20, 20, my mind just went blank. 21 chapters, 22 chapters, 22 chapters. Revelation 22. 22 chapters. He never mentions Patmos again. Not another time. Patmos never crossed his mind again. It's never written down in the scripture. It was in the first chapter. And it is in no more chapters. You don't know why? Because when he got in the spirit. God took him. Come on. Come on. Get ready. Hallelujah. I could preach some more. But I feel the Holy Ghost right here now. I come to tell you. Come on somebody. Amen. We're still talking about stuff we went through five years ago. We're still talking about stuff that we, come on somebody, amen, that we went through for who, who did us wrong, who didn't do us right. Amen, when we need to be talking about who has done us right, Jesus. When we need to say it didn't stop him, it didn't stop him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but if I was pat, pastor in Pergamus, I'd wanted to, to resign. If I was pastor in Fire Tower, I'd have probably wanted to quit. If I was pastor in Ephesus, I'd probably wanted to resign. But what moves me is he was in the midst of the church that had lost her love. He was in the midst of the doctrine of Jezebel being taught church. He was in the midst of the church of the Nicotins and the doctrine that they had. And though he hated that doctrine, he was still in the midst of her. Hallelujah. He was still in the midst of her. Amen. Hey, 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 hey. Glory. Good to see you guys. Amen. Some precious friends of mine back there. Listen, they'll tell you they've sung all over this country. Amen. We've been places. Amen. We would have thought God wouldn't be within a thousand miles, but the presence of God would move in that house. Why? Amen. It don't stop him. Because there's some of the rest that are in Thyatira. The Bible said many in the last days will give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Uh, come on, say it with me. Many in the last days say it with me. Many in the last days are going to give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. But he didn't say all of us would. That means many will. But that means there's some of the rest of us. Uh, some of the rest in Thyatira. Tower. Some of the rest in Ephesus. Some of the rest in Laodicea. Some of the rest somebody have church with me he was still in the midst of her he was still no matter how backslid they were no matter how far gone they were he was still in the midst he was still walking he wasn't just in the midst of them sister Pruitt he was walking around in them oh, and if he's in that then you know he's here if he was in that church he's here if he was in that backslid condition he's here I said he's here I said he's here and nothing can stop it you know where we were brother Pruitt you know where we were in the palm of his hands the angel of the church was the speaker the man of God the preacher was the angel of that church that's what, that's what he calls them he calls us angels <laughs> and you know where we were 
in the palm of his hand. Even when we were preaching to cameras in empty seats, we was in the palm of his hand. Even when we stood outside hospitals and prayed from a distance, he's in the palm. Some of you don't know what the old timers would be doing right now. They'd be running. Y'all missing your cue to run. We're in the mist, in the palm of his hand. Don't you think for one moment I take it lightly? I was in ICU for two and a half days. I was in ICU and they shut that door and the only people that could talk to me was somebody that I couldn't even know if it was a woman or a man because they were so suited up with clothes on and masks. They were like Dark Vader. <laughs> Take your medicine. I was 14 days past. I was done past my time. I was almost 20 days, but I was still testing positive. And it threw my heart out of rhythm into AFib. And my heart was doing almost 200 times a, a minute. My little baby 17-year-old girl's in there with me for five hours. And they tested me and found out I still was testing positive. When it did, everything changed. They started treating me like I was in the plague told her she couldn't stay in there I said she's been in here five hours they said I don't care she's got to go I said ma'am get me your charge nurse she's been here five she, well, she may have to go to the bathroom I said she's been twice I said I'm going to tell you and that charge nurse she came in she said Mr. Atkins she said we're about to put you on the ambulance she can stay with you till you go I said thank you ma'am and I was I was having a heart because I, I don't like being by myself especially in that kind of situation but I'm going to tell you something palm of his hand you ready for this they wheeled me out my little woman of God my little 17 year old baby she reached up she was crying so hard she was hyperventilating I was crying but she reached up Brother Pruitt she patted me on my chest she said daddy some nurse must really need you and need what you gotta say, or God wouldn't be letting you go through this. It just couldn't stop him. I felt like I could tackle the world. I said to myself, if I die now, I've left it in good hands. If my 17 year old's got that on her brain, then I'm pretty good. The doctor walked in the next morning, I said, you gonna shock me? I'm gonna tell you what's crazy. Them others was in Dark Vader's outfits, but he walked in without a glove on, without an apron on, and without a stitch of a mask on, and stood at the foot of my bed and talked to me while everybody else was in Dark Vader outfits. I'm like, are you the only one that can't get this? I'm just being real with you. Then he looked at me and I said, sir, are you going to shock my heart back because it's got to go back in rhythm? Because if you've ever had your heart at 200 times a minute, it feels like you're about to die. He said, I only do that for my clean patients. I said, well, I'm unclean then, sir. He said, I didn't mean it that way. I said, you said I was unclean. My doctor, because I was out of town in the heaven, my doctor said, you're kidding me. I said, no, sir, it's what he said. I ain't going to tell you all what else he said, because he, he said something else. He said some other things. He was so mad. He said... He said, he wasn't no New Brockton farm boy doctor, was he, like me? Praise God. I said, no, he wouldn't. Amen. But I'm going to tell you something. Call me unclean. He said, if you steal an A-field next week, I'll do it for you. In other words, you just go home and die. But the Lord brought me out. But I said all that, say this. I am not unsympathetic. And I'm telling you, when they shut that door on me that night, Sister Pruitt, I rode over, shut my phone off, and begged God to let me go to sleep. 
because my mind was overwhelmed with the darkness and the isolation and the loneliness the fact that I could not see my babies and touch my babies I'm telling you I believe God let me feel what these people feel when they're by themselves it's a strange land anybody getting me but I'm going to tell you this I'm not here preaching on the pandemic but I'm just here to tell you it just can't stop I don't know where you are tonight but it can't stop him how does it move you to know he's still in the midst how many members the worst night of your life when he should have been done with you and through with you where was he anybody 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 think back to the worst night of your life and the worst day of your life where was he in the mist because it just can't stop him brother Pruitt I'm going to be honest with you I ain't been perfect in my lifetime in my, come on somebody I've, I've had some trying times in my days my younger days especially come on somebody I, I wasn't perfect Brass, you've been preaching since 14 I understand but I wouldn't always come on the enemy fight I got discouraged I got discouraged and I found myself hey man I made choices come on somebody that would have led me down a wrong road are you hearing me and they're right in the midst of it guess where he was why are you doing this Am I the only one who knows what I'm talking about? Turn your head. Turn your head. Don't you look. Anybody, come on, y'all looking all sanctimonious now. I feel like I'm the only one here. You ever been there where you, you knew he was there and you wanted to say, turn your head. Don't you look. Don't you look. Don't. And he still stood there watching every move you made, every decision you made. And you were saying, I wish you would leave. I wish you'd just turn your head. I don't want you to see me like this. And he's going, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Come on. How does it feel to know that on the worst, most ugliest day of your life, he was still standing there with his hand? Judas just betrayed him. And he called him friend. You know what he's saying? I ain't left you. I'm right here, sir. I'm right here, son. Give me your hand. I'm going to pull you out of this. Come on, somebody. And Judas went and hung himself because he couldn't handle the fact that he looked at his shame and still wanted him. Peter, it couldn't stop him. Come on, somebody. Mary Magdalene, it couldn't stop him. The woman at the well with five husbands and the one she was with, it just couldn't stop him. Matter of fact, he ran all night long. If it don't stop him, then why should it stop me? Peter climbed up in that upper room. He was hid over in the corner and about that time on resurrection morning, Mary busted up in the tomb, up in the room and said he told me to tell his disciples and where's Peter at? Because he told me to make sure he told you he's alive. You know what he was saying? Peter, I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. I don't care where you're watching from and I don't care what you involved in, and I don't care what's going on in your life it can't stop him and if it can't stop him from coming to you then why are you going to let it stop you from coming to him if it won't stop him from coming to you don't let it stop you from coming to him so right now I want you to get up on your feet if you're watching by the waves of the internet folks we've had thousands getting help on the on the foreign fields that we would have never touched if we hadn't went through this people being healed instantly in their homes you're watching right now had a backslider been backslid almost 17 years on, on, and my house service at my house started weeping and crying because the Holy Ghost told me to say something on the way I'm coming to tell you it ain't stopped him from coming here why are you going to let it stop you from coming to him right now in the name of Jesus move Come on, come on, come to him right now. Come to him and lift your hands and say, Lord, I'm going to get in the spirit. I'm going to get in the spirit. 
I'm going to get in the spirit today. I'm going to get in the spirit tomorrow. I'm going to get in the spirit Wednesday. I'm going to get in the spirit Sunday. I'm going to get in the spirit. There's some of you been wrestling with some stuff in your life. And I want you to look around and see that he's standing right there in the middle of your ugliest, darkest days. When you was the most filthiest, vile that you could be, he never left the room. You wish to God he wasn't in the room, but he was still there. You wish to God you could have put him outside the door so he didn't have to look at you in the condition he was in. But he knocks and he says, if you'll just open the door, I'll sup with you. I'll sup with you. I'll sup with you. I'll sup with you. Come on, let's strip these seats all over the house and come help me pray with these around this altar. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Last week when we went to that little fair in our town, we walked around twice. And right in the middle of that fair, when the second time he come around, a woman grabbed us, left her entire, her entire little game thing at that fair, and grabbed me and my wife and almost fell to the ground. She said, will you pray with me right now? She said, I've watched you when you got out of the car. She said, the glory of God's rest is on you. She said, I've seen the presence of God. She said, I'm a backslider. I used to sing on the platform. She said, I backslid. She said, I got wounded and I left God. She said, I married a woman. I've been in a lesbian lifestyle, married to a woman. She said, but I left that three weeks ago and I'm trying to get back to my husband. We're trying to work things out. She said, but I want to feel him. I can't feel him. She said, but when y'all got out of that car, come on somebody. She said, I can feel him. She said, I want to feel that glory again. I want to feel his presence again. I said, honey, my son broke his leg four Friday nights ago so I could be here tonight because I wouldn't be here. I'd be up at the football field getting ready for a football game. I said, when he broke his leg, I could be here. Hallelujah. That's how much God loves you. That's how much God loves you. That's how much God desires to work in your life. It just can't stop Him. And if it can't stop Him, why should I let it stop me? Come on, Judas. Come on, Judas. He's standing there. But Judas didn't come to Him because He let it stop Him. Peter didn't let it stop him from getting to Jesus because Jesus got to him. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, help me pray. Come on, don't let Brother Pruitt be the only one that prays in this altar with people. Just can't stop it. If you're watching by the waves of the internet, hallelujah, you ain't got to have me lay hands on you right there in your living room. He's still there.
I go blue till I get in the spirit. I gotta pray till I start communing. I gotta start not praying till I start fellowshipping and sharing with him.